guys, welcome back to marketing. Today we're gonna dive into chapter 10, uh, menu marketing, if you please. As always, have your book in front of you. Let's look at page 236. Um, the factors influencing guest food selections. An effective marketing plan will get customers in an establishment's door, but did you know the menu is actually an operation's most effective sales and marketing tool it, it's really crazy and and customers select menu items for a variety of reasons um when i walk into a restaurant or establishment and i look at the menu i may select foods um, based on different reasons or criterias or or my decision making process is totally different um, than the person sitting next to me so um, menus are important to the success of the restaurant and the food service operation therefore there are several concepts that you should know as a manager about using the menu marketing tool using your menus to market your customers one is you need to know the key factors that influence customers menu selections okay you also need to understand food menu design uh, menus are designed in, in specific ways to, to um, promote or target you into buying specials, which specials may be a, a way that um, the establishment increases sales um, or get rid of, I don't want to, I hate to use the word leftovers, but again, last uh, chapter or so ago we talked about you may have bought an abundance of meat because it was on sale and now you need to get rid of it you would advertise it in a specific place use it as a special or a special uh, could be targeted specifically on the menu because that is your high contribution margin item that may be the one that you make the most money on um, so anyway um, there, there's a specific way that we need to look at menus. We need to understand the design, and then we need to understand beverage menu designs. That's a little bit different than your regular um, uh, food menu. All right, so you, you need to know the price. The, the menu prices uh, very often affect the customer's selection. You need to understand that. Personal health, obviously, is one of those things that affect um, the buying decision of your consumer. Uh, they may have diets that address specific uh, nutritional concerns. They may be vegetarian. They may be looking only for organic. You need to understand those things. Uh, nutritional concerns. Um, customers today are concerned with nutrition and the nutritional components of food items. Some customers conscientiously select items based on levels of the carbs, proteins, fats. I know right now, I think I told y'all I'm trying the whole low carb thing. Hello, this pastry chef cutting out sugar and, and flour. Hmm, we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, but anyway, those are some of the uh, nutritional concerns or other reasons why um, customers may select certain items from your menu. Uh, vegetarian diets you know vegetarian diets is not a one um, one shoe fits all diet you have your vegans who don't eat food or animal products at all lacto vegetarians um, who consume dairy products um, then you got your ovo they consume eggs then you got your lacto ovo they um, they uh, vegetarians they add both dairy and products into their diet so that it's not a one-size-fit-all so you need to remember that so when you advertise on your menu vegetarian you need to know which veg, ve, which vegetarian you're marketing there okay um, the other thing is organic religious dietary restrictions food allergies all of those are going to play a role in them all right now designing menus to accommodate diets you can read there you need to put those specific items in a separate section on the menu uh, use visual indicators and make a general statement let people know um, we recognize the nutritional and the allergen concerns of our guests. Make sure you put a statement with that. Now, designing your food menu, um, you need to understand your target market 
your competition, and your consumer trends. Um, all of those play a part and have a relationship in your menu design, um, which is going to market the individuals when they come in to purchase things. So make sure that you understand that, the target market and the role it plays, it's one of the first things. You're gonna design your menu based on your target audience. You're not gonna have a menu that, um, again, I know I've used Chuck E. Cheese through this entire scenario. You would not have a fine dining menu at a kid establishment, okay? So understand your target market there. Your competition, know what your competitors are uh, charging and, and um, what they're putting on their menu. Consumer trends, definitely keep up with that. Assessing the target's customer interest in a trend. Um, investing in equipment not currently owned to prepare the new items. Um, testing and modifying recipes. How many of us are going to put a recipe on a menu and not even test it? Come on, we gotta make sure we know the ins and outs of that recipe, our um, food waste, uh, our accessibility, how much it's going to cost, where we're going to get it from, um, you know, all, all those kinds of things before we put something on a menu. Uh, then we got to have the proper employees or retain the cooks that are going to prepare it. So we need to make sure we understand that. Um, and then the redesigning of the menu itself. Um, obviously, a special today may not be a special tomorrow. So you need to make sure that um, you're staying on top of it, that your menu is reflective of the trends, your offerings, and where you're at today. Now, another consumer trend um, is that family eating out due to increased number of working parents. Guess what? More and more people are eating out. Mom and dad are having to work outside of this COVID-19 right now. Typically, mom and dads are having to work, so more and more families are eating out versus eating at home. Um, you need to make sure that, you know, your decor and your furniture, your furnishings, you have high chairs, booster seats, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you need to think about that. So make sure you check out consumer trends. Now, menu pricing psychology. We've talked a little bit of, about this in chapter six. We talked about how if you have something on your menu, for $5.99, that looks like a better deal than $6. People see the five, they really don't pay attention to the 99 and they think they're getting something in the $5 range. If you put $6 on there, that takes it up another whole dollar. And so they're like, mm, $6 may not be worth it. So, so there's a rhyme or reason to those commercials that say $29.99 or $12.99. Um, it's to make it sound less expensive more appealing, a better bargain, um, you know, forking out $19 is better than forking out $20. So, you know, you need to uh, definitely use some of that psychology, low end value pricing, um, mid range value pricing, upscale value pricing, low end is pricing products and services based on their worth in usefulness or importance to the buyer. Um, usually that would be your quick service restaurants, okay? They're using low-end value pricing. They are taking something um, that is about $2.90 and they're selling it for $2. But guess what? They can do that because they're basing their quantity of sales on how much they're going to sell or, or they're basing their sales on quantity. Um, they're going to sell 100 hamburgers at two dollars versus one hamburger at um or or let's say let's not say one let's say uh 50 hamburgers at three dollars okay so they're using quantity of sales um with a lower price range now mid-range prices are usually fast casual and casuals um, segments tend to be five as often as in nine such as 7.95 um instead of $7.99, so remember that. Uh, value is usually gonna be like um, under $10, all right? The price is gonna be $9 or under 10. Um, Mid-range is gonna be like $7.95 versus $7.99. 
Um, customers typically perceive both these prices as above $7 and less than $8. So that's going to be your mid-range. Now your upscale, your upscale is going to be a little bit different. Uh, prices for the upscale or fine dining markets tend to end in zero. So it's going to be like $17 or, um, yeah, it's going to end in zero. So really, that's the way I need you to think about that, okay? Um, upscale is going to end in zero. They're going to be uh, straight up um, uh, like $17 at the end of the description of the product, or they may just put $17 at the end. Usually your fine dining restaurants are going to look like that format. Uh, so now we're going to move over to page 245. Let's check out menu layout and design principles. Now, a la carte menus, these are menus that have different prices for each menu item, okay? A la carte has a different price for each and every item on your menu. Where the table de hoit menu, these menus offer an entire meal. So I'm going to think about... Um, um, French courses, when you have a coursed meal, you have one price and you may have a three course meal. You may have your um, appetizer or your starter, your, um, you may have your main meal and a dessert. That would be your three course or something of that nature. Um, so just keep that in mind. That would be one price for an entire meal. All right, um, that and you know what? That also would include like banquets. You pay seven or thirty-nine dollars and all you can eat uh, banquet meal. All right, now um, cyclical menus. All right, these are menus that usually they're like for cafeterias or institutional um, establishments, your schools, your nursing homes, um, things like that. They have a cyclical menu, which is a menu that changes every 28 days, okay? It's the same menu, but it rotates every 28 days. And then the du jour menu, the du jour uh, menu changes daily, all right? So that would get kind of crazy. I mean, a lot of times I know um, Edgar's, they have seasonal menus, so they change their menu seasonally. Um, so there's different styles and how often you're going to change them. All right, now table turn. How many of you know what table turn is? Yeah, table turn is how many times in a service time frame that table seats customers? How many rotations? All right, so that's the table turn. Um, <clears throat> It, it refers to the number of times a dining room table is occupied during a meal period. Now, um, some things that you need to keep in mind when you are experimenting with menu design. The menu must be attractive and present a first good impression. Come on, it needs to be attractive. Uh, should not be cluttered. Oh my gosh, like some people's... Um, I'm thinking of their cell phones with all of the apps on there. It's so cluttered, you can't find what you're looking for. Um, the print size. You need to think about your print size, okay? You don't need it so small that uh, you have to have your glasses on to read it. And you don't want it so large that you don't have room to get all your stuff on there. Size and shape. That's going to be indicative. Um, the size and shape of menu are important considerations and they should be such that the customer can handle your menu easily. Um, your typical, they've got tri-fold, single fold, um, they got your prime real estate sections there. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, so anyway, yeah, so a menu, I mean, we, we see single page menus. It, it just really depends on what you desire for your establishment. You just want to make sure, though, that it's, it's manageable. It can fit in their hands, and it can fit the information it needs to. All right, now, menu layout. Menu layout refers to where the items are placed on that menu. Um, now, the prime real estate areas... Those you can, I want you to look at exhibit 10.8 on 247. Those that give you some ideas of where prime real estate. Prime real estate are the areas that are most frequently viewed by the customers. That is going to be the 
first space that's going to come into the vision of your customer. So make sure that when you're designing your menu, you put your important things or or your um, your higher profited items there or the things that are your specials there. That's your prime real estate, all right? Um, type selection there. Uh, type size is the size of the lettering, all right? Do you want it 12 point, 14, you know, and, and what font? So that's your um, type size. You gotta think about your colors, they need to go together, your white space. White space is the areas that don't contain any information. That's known as white space. Um, leading is the term used to describe the vertical spacing between lines of type, so that's your leading. Now let's talk about menu item descriptions. Descriptions of quantity, accuracy of those quality indicators, Use brand names. Um, I talk about Wagyu beef. You wanna make sure the name Wagyu is in your descriptive line there. Um, also, menu planners must consider uh, some of the issues when writing a menu. You wanna write plainly. Define the menu items carefully. Spell the words correctly. Um, write carefully. Um, and, and make sure you're putting a enticing description with your menu item. It needs to be something, um, you know, like salmon filet served with a baked potato ladled uh, with our special sauce. Or, you know, make it enticing. Make it the imagery of it, your words, make it have the imagery of lusciousness. You want people to want it after they read it on your menu. All right, now, menu modifications. Um, I am going to stop right here. Menu modifications, um, you need to establish your goals for the new item, determine possible new menu items, um, establish a testing system, you need to identify test and refine alternatives, consumer field tests, evaluate the test and choose your course of action. Um, you definitely, there is a way to go into designing your menu and testing it, so make sure you look at that. Now, designing your beverage menu, I want y'all to take a look at that. Um, you're going to definitely, offering alcoholic beverages to customers is an integral part of the dining experience. So you want to make sure that you have that menu organized, well thought out, just like you do your um, food menu. Um, you want to categorize it and then your wines, you're going to put those together in a specific manner. So make sure you check that out and read that in your book. As always, if you have any questions, give me a call. I'm here for you and uh, I'll see you in chapter 11, our final chapter. Yay! Um, I'll see you there and, in, and unless you need me for anything, I'm going to sign out now. Y'all have a great evening. Bye-bye.